Hi, I'm Todd Watkins. I'm in the Economics Department in the College of Business and Economics, and I'm the director of Lehigh's Microfinance Program. And I'd like to talk to you about some microfinance activities in a field immersion program that we have at Lehigh. In this field immersion program, we take students abroad, and this group of students that we took this year was a real mix of students from economics, international relations, computer science, and business, uh, mechanical engineering. There's a finance student in there, an MBA student as well. And what we did was went to Kenya to try to real, put a real personal face, a human face, on uh, what microfinance is to interact with some professionals there, meet some of the clients of microfinance organizations, and learn their strategies, their business strategies, and really immerse ourselves in the field about how microfinance works. This slide and the next one are from the Kibera slum, which is one of the densest slums in the world. It's just outside of Nairobi, Kenya. And estimates are between a quarter million and a million people live in this slum in fairly abject um, conditions. And many of the clients of the microfinance organizations that we were working with live in uh, this area in Nairobi. Here's a little micro enterprise of one of the clients of the microfinance organization called Sam F3. This is in the Kibera slum near Nairobi. This is Monica Masaka. Monica runs a little shop, as you can see, she sells uh, sodas and um, soaps and just little things that you might get in a small convenience store. This happens to be very deep within the slum uh, of Kasumu in Nairobi. And she used her microfinance loan to help expand the stock in her store. This picture shows one of the typical scenes that we experienced while we were investigating the strategies and tactics of how microfinance works in the field. This is a group meeting. Many microfinance organizations assemble groups of people that are going to create savings accounts and loans together uh, and sort of jointly guarantee each other's loan. If one member of the group doesn't uh, fails to pay back, the other members can help out a bit. And it's been a very successful strategy worldwide in uh, getting finance flowing into the hands of some of the poorest people on the planet when banks are hesitant to give loans to people without any collateral. Uh, sort of the social collateral of the group has been an effective substitute. One of the members of the group we just saw, her name was Rose, and she uh, is a tailor. She used her very first microfinance loan many years ago to buy a sewing machine, and uh, that loan was about $50. And over the years, she's gotten larger and larger loans and expanded her business to where she now has six machines in her tailoring shop. She employs several people. Um, and her latest loan was about $1,200 for various fabrics and, and other equipment that she was expanding. That same group, as we were watching, was collecting loan repayments, uh, and the women would come up, give their money to the secretary and the treasurer of the group, and they would record the transactions largely in ledger books. Everything was done by hand, including back in the office with the microfinance organization. So one of the things that we're doing with our students while we're on these trips and back here on campus at Lehigh is trying to uh, improve the efficiency through technology. As you can imagine, recording everything in ledger books is a fairly time-consuming process, and then bringing it back to the home office and re-recording it in the books of the microfinance organization by hand. So what the students here are doing is working with a microfinance organization in Nairobi called SAMF3, Springs of Africa Microfinance and uh, developing an electronic database using access that will replace and supplement the record keeping, the paper record keeping of the MFI. One of the more interesting uses of microfinance that we saw while we were in Nairobi was this recipient of a microfinance loan in the Kibera slums. This is a school called the Joy Springs School that was given a loan to expand their school. As you can see, there's a concrete structure on the bottom, which was the original school, and they use part of their loan proceeds to build a uh, second floor up above. This school now has 450 students in um, the slums of Nairobi. This next slide is the Kasumu Medical Education Trust, uh, KMET, which is an organization that does things, many things besides microfinance, but they give microfinance loans to uh, private healthcare uh, providers and community healthcare workers. That's a really interesting application of microfinance because they're specializing in giving uh, microfinance loans to pr private providers of healthcare services and to companies or small microenterprises that are providing foodstuffs and soaps, antibacterial soaps, things that might have health implications. The woman pictured here, her name is Jennifer Wandere. She was a client of the KMET uh, microfinance organization. 
Jennifer is HIV positive, and she joined a group of five members and got a small microfinance loan of about $700 uh, in order to open an agricultural facility capable of housing several hundred chickens at a time, um, which they would then sell into the local marketplaces and to restaurants. One of the more enjoyable things we got to do while we were voyaging around Kenya was to visit the homes and the microenterprise businesses that uh, the enterprises that were getting loans from the microfinance organizations. This is a fairly posed group shop, but the woman in the headscarf there, her name is Pamela Akini Musotsi, and she has a great story at one level and a very sad story at another level, but it gave us a lot of hope for how microfinance could, could work in the future. She uh, was a seamstress. She used her first microfinance loan of about $100 to expand the amount of cloth she was able to buy as a seamstress. She moved from being a vegetable seller on the side of the road, not a very lucrative business, into being a seamstress. And over the years, she'd been with KMET for t uh, since 2003, so about uh, eight years, getting loan after loan after loan, and had now been able to expand her business. She uh, also uh, started another business with a group of friends in brick making. She built several houses now that she was renting out to other people. The sad part of her story is that she lost 10 sons to AIDS over the years, uh, which is a plague on Africa. And the children in front of her in this photograph are all her grandchildren that she now cares for. She's putting them through school with the loans, uh, with the proceeds that she got from her loans. Pamela's youngest grandchild was named Mercy. This is Mercy here eating a cob of corn. Uh, these children were happy, they were well fed, they were clearly well educated, they were interested in what we were doing there, they were inquisitive, looking at my camera, always wanting me to take their pictures. So I was happy to take their pictures and share them a little bit here with you. Um, we really enjoyed these sorts of interactions because these children were clearly the future of, of Kenya, the future of Africa, and what microfinance was able to do for this particular family and, and the other families that we were meeting with. Uh, give us a lot of hope for the future and how microfinance might help these families.